I know. Is Mike here? Is he? I was. No, he's not. That he's not. Okay, he's not. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I, the agenda we had was. I know we had talked about like. Um, it's basically what you guys want to discuss. But I know Jim, you had said that you had the numbers for like the three to five year projection um, of projects that would be undertaken. Um, and major like equipment purchases. So is that um, is that what you just handed out? Yeah. What actually what I just gave you was the uh, was the year end numbers. Okay. And uh, which was the carryover from like the general fund? Yeah. And then I also have. Of John's uh, information, I can run next door and make everybody one. But um, it might be helpful. That was uh, this project. Can we make this for everyone? Do you mind? No. Thanks. I didn't get John's information in time to get everything checked, which is why I didn't have copies for everybody. Uh, but I did kind of summarize that, so we can go over that in just a minute. But as far as um, our cash flow uh, detail that I gave you, my fund, the, uh, the items that are stapled together is the general fund. So you can see we. Uh, <coughs> Flip to the actually bottom of the first page. Total revenues for the year in the general fund: um, one million fifty-three dollars or fifty-three thousand two hundred twenty-eight dollars. And if you go all the way to page five, you can see that our um, year-to-date expenses were. $895,023.17. So um, we did pretty well with that. Uh, keep in mind we're still on the, uh, the abbreviated plan with the sheriff, so that helped us uh, come out a little bit ahead of the game. Uh, if you just look through these, if you go down that first page, um, you can see where the money comes from. It's just nice information sometimes to take a peek at. Uh, obviously, the first line is our property tax, uh, which is a, a big part of our uh, our budget. $654,000 came into the general fund uh, property taxes. And if you pop starting on the second page, um, after you get past all the little zeros um, on the expenditures, um, <clears throat> going to scroll down. Actually, on page three of five, you start seeing the uh, the money that's really going out in the, the bigger chunks. Um, let's see, supplies and materials um, with almost eleven thousand um, salaries um, are kind of spread out throughout that um, in different locations. Um, 
one big chunk that we uh, that we have every year is our property insurance premium, which is on page four, which is uh, $29,000 and change, and that's the general fund portion. Uh, our property insurance for the year, for the entire village, runs us about 51900 in round numbers. Um, other than that, if you have any any questions or anything, otherwise it's just kind of good good information to take home and uh, and read tomorrow when we're all snowed in. <laughs> so and then the other the general fund is is the fund that I think is most important because it's uh, the fund that we can can spend on anything. But I also wanted to uh, because John's projects and in his department and the service department are probably the most expensive and, and things. So I wanted to uh, kind of just give you the other accounts that are used for street maintenance. We have uh, the street construction and maintenance fund, uh, that's the, the first page after the staple group, the one that's um, labeled fund 2011, street construction and maintenance repair. You can see uh, our uh, Total revenues for the year were uh, 192,647. Uh, our total expenditures were 192,660. So we spend almost everything that comes into that. And a big chunk of that is the uh, the salaries. The, the bulk of the uh, service department salaries come out of there. So uh, 106,000. 738 in salaries, uh, 31,700 in public employee retirement. Uh, their um, their uh, hospitalization insurance comes out of there, 9,700. Uh, and of course, our work comp contribution, 4,343. So, uh, but these are the funds that, when we get around to talking about John's projects, that can pay for the street. If you flip to the next page, that's the 2021 fund, that's the state highway. That's funded from a portion of the gas excise tax that we received from the state. So, as you can see, we didn't get a lot of money into that fund this year. Our total revenue was uh, 13438 and we didn't charge any of the uh, personnel cost of that fund last year. So that's one of the, I'm sorry, Jerry and Trish weren't here earlier. Um, one of the things we're, that I'm working with John on this year is we're gonna do a better job of keeping track of where his employees spend their time. So we revamped their time card and we're going to, uh, it's gonna keep track of what time they spend on the state <coughs> highway, like mowing US 50 and any repairs and things they do along there, cleaning out the ditches along there. Uh, it's also going to track his time in the park, which is a big part of his time in the summer. Uh, and then he's going to break it down into what he spends on the buildings, what he spends on street repairs. Uh, so we kind of are lumping streets in with uh, you know, snow plowing, repairs to the equipment that they use for that, and things like that. We're not trying to get down to every 15 minutes where it goes, but uh, just enough that uh, the auditors like it when we can go back and say, here's why we're allocating their time to this and why we're allocating so much. So if we have a, a year or a two year cycle where we can say, you know, if you look at two years, they spent 48% of their time in the park, 20% on the streets. And so we'll be able to justify that and then we'll We'll start this year. Uh, that fund was was really drawn down in the past, so uh, but we will start allocating some of the money for the time they spend out on the state highway to that fund. So, and we can use that to lobby for more money from the state somewhere down the line, I guess. So. So we didn't spend any. We had no expenditures for. No, we didn't spend anything out of that fund last year. <laughs> okay. Uh, like because. what normally would. Like what normally would get spent? What we could spend out of that on state highways would be um, their time 
for working on them. Okay. The fuel for mowing them. I think that we could, if we had a, a breakdown on the time that they spend mowing, which we'll kind of have once we get once you do that. Okay. Repairs and maintenance yeah. to the equipment, you could break it down that low. Probably, you know, it, it won't cover the, uh, the salaries, so we probably aren't going to be able to get much further than that. But and one of the reasons we didn't take the money out of there last year is because we didn't have a justification for it and they weren't tracking their time. Mm, okay. And I knew we were going to get, be able to get it back this year when we started this. So, so it'll help this year and it'll help uh, bump up the other funds. And they've got enough projects coming up that uh, they're going to need the money in the other funds. So next page is the permissive motor vehicle tax. That's the license tax that the, uh, the village collects. Um, <clears throat> this is another fund that uh, can be used for anything to do with the roadways. Um, so we, we could, if we chose, put part of their salary then through this fund. Uh, you can see we only uh, we only made twenty-five thousand dollars in this fund last year, twenty-five five forty-nine. Uh, so a lot of the operating supplies and materials are repairs to equipment, uh, parts. So as you can see, we spent twenty-two thousand dollars of that uh, total expenditure is twenty-two nine fifty-six. So again, there's some money there that could be going towards salaries, uh, but. I wanted to have a good backing to justify where that money is. You know, and these are funds that um, can go towards some of the projects that, uh, that John needs to do on the roadways. Um, Trish has his, uh, his project estimates <coughs> there. Um, one of the things that he threw in every year was about $200,000 in just maintenance and repairs on the streets. And uh, Mike in the past had asked John to, uh, to come up with a list of the, let's say two, four. He asked him to come up with a list of the worst streets that were in the most need of being repaired. And um, John was thinking these are, these are streets that need milled, repaired, brought up to subgrade into what we need them to be to be a good street and then resurfaced. So he came up with uh, a list of uh, six, uh, let me count again, two, four, seven streets that um, I got a kind of a wag estimate from Hamilton County on what that might cost. And uh, early last year their cost was $39 per square yard for uh, doing one of those streets. Um, they based it off a project they were doing at that time in North College Hill with an actual project that had been out the bid. So they felt like that was a pretty good price. And that had curb replacement, not all our streets have curbs and things. So this is kind of a ballpark number, but uh, the, uh, the total cost for those seven streets, if we were to redo all those at one time, the guesstimate is about a million three hundred twenty thousand. So, when you talk about you know, what seems like a lot of money, uh, when you start redoing streets, it doesn't go very far. So, and just so you feel better about this, uh, for instance, uh, Laird Street between North Miami and where it terminates, the guesstimate on that one I have is basically 35,000. Uh, Elliott Street to Skidmore, or excuse me, Elliott Street, Skidmore Avenue to Maiden Lane. Pretty short little area, um, about forty thousand two hundred to do that. So, yeah, not the largest one that he had was um, West Morgan from North Miami to where it terminates. That one was almost, and I'm not sure that the numbers are correct in this because I haven't had a chance to talk with him. That one's a million bucks. So West I don't know how, Morgan, yeah, or East Morgan. Uh, he's got West Morgan to West Morgan Street, North Miami Avenue to its termination. That's the street right in front of my house. That's not in that so, 
other side of this? So, well, the other thing that Mike could ask him to do is um, to break the streets. And uh, so, on a, a scale of, I guess, one to five, uh, five being excellent and one being uh, needs total reconstruction, curbs and things. Um, he went through all 49 streets and gave Mike an idea of which one were the priorities. So I can, unfortunately, can't copy them right now, but I can get this information out to you guys. Can you email it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I've got that. I can email it too. Right? Yeah. So, so the first, the, the top seven that you ranked, that you gave like the million, 23,000, are those like, or approximate, are those on that other ranked one to five? Yeah. Would those be like the top yeah. seven? Okay, that's the same. Yeah, that's, um, okay. I didn't go back and verify where he yeah. had them, but I just took the, the streets that they decided probably needed that that way. Okay. the worst. I don't know what street Danny Stacy lives on, but I know Danny's been that's playing Jack's, right Jackson Drive. Oh, okay. Uh, last time I ran into him, he, uh, he said, put in a good word for me, my street needs to rehab. <laughs> so, but I think everybody would do that. That's the one with the drainage. Yeah. The yeah. The drainage? Yeah. 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 So probably a lot of that's going to get redone with that drainage issue. That's not a very long street, is it? No, it's a very short dead end. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, no, that's really helpful. Does anyone? Yeah. Yeah, Jackson Court is only 568 foot long. And. And that was rated a, a two, so not the, the worst rating that John had, but uh, pretty much up there. Needs major re surface repairs, road surface milled and paved with full depth repairs. <clears throat> so. I guess I'm just trying to understand, so the general fund, when it's um, a general property tax yep. real estate, so um, if that brought in like X amount that year, and now that the levy so the levy didn't pass, but isn't there like a gap, or are we in the arrears for that? Or like, we'll, we'll just trying to understand like if the levy passes or fails, like what, how that's going to impact? Um, like how much we lose basically <laughs> if it doesn't? We lost about three hundred eleven thousand dollars with that levy not passing. So we actually like we, lose we will, that for oh. a period of time. Yeah, for the for uh, for this year, and then depending on whether the voters would uh, be good enough to renew that levy or put the pass the new levy that you asked for, I'm trying to get to that. So it's like three hundred eleven thousand for this calendar year versus like yes, it's like yeah, and and that's a, an estimate based on yeah. what the auditor believes they'll collect. So I'm just trying to think how that would impact like. that any balance is still, like we would have it covered, I guess, right now. Yeah, the, but the, the saving grace right now is this, we're, our police protection costs are extremely low because the sheriff has been good enough to cover us at a part-time rate. Um, just so you know, there was a, a meeting today um, that uh, with the sheriff department and uh, the townships and Doug Nicholas went on behalf of Cleve since Mike is out of town um, in North Bend. So Harrison Township, Whitewater Crosby, and Miami Township, and uh, our village in North Bend. Um, I talked to Doug afterwards. It didn't go very far. The townships um, complained, Miami Township complained that they were paying too much now and they didn't want to pay more. Um, the other townships complain that because right now they aren't paying anything and they don't have the money and passing a levy, um, just as a for instance, what they would like to see Whitewater pay would take about a 10 mil levy and uh, I think chances of anybody passing a 10 mil levy in today's economy would, would be, I don't want to say impossible, but uh, not yeah, not likely. And, Chuck, turn your recording off. I'm just going to say this. I live in Whitewater, and I would not vote for a 10 mil levy. 
God knows I love the service we get from the Sheriff's Department, but not 10 bills worth. Um, so, nothing much came out of that. They took some information. They're going to go back and get some additional information for the townships, and uh, they're uh, planning another meeting in a couple months. So, so have, I, have I lost you any place along the line that you wanted to ask questions? I was just thinking, I know we talked about the council meeting, I think, but like the new, if the six mil levy passes in May, that'll generate more than that 311,000, right? Yes. If it doesn't, then that's another year that you would have the opportunity to place it on the uh, on the ballot again in November. So you would have two opportunities to pass and be levied in the year 2022 and collected in 2023. Mm -hmm. So um, I apologize, my. Trying to get the uh, the information up that you have from. Like if it didn't pass in May, then can, if we put it back on in November, can we lower the mills or are we? Yeah, you can. We can still if change it, it wouldn't pass, you can adjust the millage to whatever you'd like. You can ask for more or less. Um, so you're looking for that certificate? Yeah. yeah that's uh, three hundred sixty-one thousand twenty-six dollars estimated. Yeah, that's six for that six mil. Sorry, what was that? Three hundred sixty-one thousand. Yeah. Uh, $26. So the, the cost, like if that would have renewed per well, like $100,000 house, per, like it's actually going to be more, right? If this passes in May than if it would have renewed just slightly? If it would have renewed, it would have um, would have remained at the same millage but at the old valuation rate. So that's why you had the the choice of where you wanted to uh, to go with the millage, and I'm <clears throat> I think that uh, Jerry was was correct in you know, recognizing that you know, we need that those additional funds. Um, the um, one thing that um, depending on how you uh, you look at the levy, um, you know, right now. If you, uh, if you compare the difference between the old levy and the new levy, it's not a large increase, but um, I believe if you would consider this year a tax holiday, <laughs> here we go, uh, the old levy versus the new levy uh, per $100,000 home value is $48.69 additional per month. So. Basically, because that levy wasn't isn't going to be collected in 2022 or paid in 2022, um, the new levy, in essence, will go three years and four months before it starts to cost the homeowner any more than had that old levy been renewed and they paid it this year. If my numbers are correct. That, that forty-eight dollars. That's what the new if the new levy passes. That's the difference between the old levy and the new levy per hundred thousand. So the new new levy uh, for a hundred thousand dollar market value home would be two hundred and ten dollars. Correct. Estimated annual. Cost. And the old levy was one hundred sixty one thirty one for a hundred thousand. So if uh, if people consider it a tax holiday, which probably came in handy this year with inflation, um, maybe they'll be uh, they'll be good enough to. Renew that. Um, what, what did you just say about when kick in until like three? It'll months? be levied for 2022, but taxes are collected in the rear, so we won't collect anything until 2023. Oh, okay. So, what do you mean when you say a tax holiday? So, the village in 2022, none of the village people will be, no levy. Is that right? That levy won't be on their tax bill for the, for the year 2022. Oh. Okay. So, but it'll be back in and they'll be paying it and we'll get, basically we'll miss that for one year. So, and my, uh, 
had a little saying that I like to um, to uh, refer to the financial health of your government, mm -hmm. as a, and I. I always make sure that I acknowledge where I got this because I don't want to get nailed for plagiarism. I'm not going to run for president. Uh, but the, according to Governing Magazine, a local government is financially healthy if it can deliver the services its citizens expect with the resources its citizens provide now and in the future. So hopefully, uh, you know, as we talk about these things, we talk about the, the projects and what needs to be done. Um, we'll be able to, uh, to show the people that their money will be well spent and uh, they'll provide the funding so that we can maintain the village the way they would like to see it maintained and live in. And then when does the next renewal come up? There's another one, right? That's like a three <coughs> mil or something? The uh, 3.9 mil levy, mm -hmm. operating levy, is um, this is its last year, so it can be placed on the ballot in November or any time next year. So and we'll receive the funds for it next year. If it's not renewed, then we would not receive those funds in the year after that. So, and also, just so everybody knows, does everybody understand the inside the 10 mil limit and outside the 10 mil limit because that's confusing. So you, you have funds that are, your residents are allowed to be taxed up to 10 mils without that being voted on. Now school districts are notorious for starting up the, the inside millage back in the day. So the village has 3.79 mils um, within the 10 mil limit, so, and we also have a 0.3 mil police pension fund inside that 10 mil, so those don't have to be voted on. Um, the other levies that we have is a, a 3.9 mil current expense levy, um, three point, and that one expires in 2022. We have a 3.5 mil safety services levy um, that began in 2017 and uh, that's a continuous levy. And then the 2.5 mil fire levy that was two years ago. Uh, yeah, 2019. And uh, that's a continuous levy as well. Does anybody else have any discussion items? Just a quick question. Jim, do you have these in a document you can email on? Yes. Okay. Um, on the... Uh, no, that's a, oh, that's a raw... Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the uh, street construction, maintenance and repair, crash flow detail. Mm -hmm. um, I was just curious on page. So, page one, so. Um, so personal services, is that you said that's their their pay line? Yeah. Um, just curious why July is seeming to hire so so much more than other months. Um, likely July was overtime and it was likely a three pay period month because of the, uh, the bi-weekly pay. <clears throat> and that's, that's a good catch because that happens about three times a year and your, uh, your OPRS contribution jumps that month and the pay jumps that month. And uh, the only bad thing about doing bi-weekly payrolls. Okay, thank you. And yeah, I just was 
was looking to see like the beginning of the year, the winter months, you would think that would be quite a bit more, but, but there every time going to salt. Yeah, well, we, had a, so. we had a really mild winter last year, so we were very blessed yeah. with that. Um, our salt bill was practically nothing last year. Uh, we'll probably use more salt tomorrow <laughs> than we yeah. used last year. Um, so. Did we buy any salt this year, or did, are we just living off of what we had last year? Uh, I think we we will get a, an allotment from the county, but I don't think we have to pay for it unless we use a we get a bill from them every year. Uh, we did just pay. Uh, I don't know if it was in last month's uh, pay ordinance. It's probably in, in uh, next week's pay ordinance. Uh, the two thousand dollar agreement that we have with uh, Miami Township to share the loader to load the truck, which. For anybody that's ever had to work on something that's been used around salt, that two thousand dollars is really a cheap investment. <laughs> so, salt just really eats away at everything. So, which is why um, John probably I think mentioned at the last meeting that um, you know, a lot of the older equipment is starting to nickel and dime us. Um, we had um, one of the trucks in last month for a fuel pump and uh, something else. I think at one point in time he was down to a pickup truck. So thankfully that didn't happen during a snowstorm. You know, most, most of the time when a truck is going to have a problem, it's like tonight before you need it tomorrow. So we were blessed with that, but um, you know, he's probably spot on with needing to replace some equipment. send out that street list to everybody. <laughs> 